is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on this ninth day of June. My pleasure to be here. Tiger Technicians Hour 877 927 Thank you to all our great hosts from earlier in the day. Hope this hope this keeps up all of that. I mean, just a great deal of information. Wonderful market to be discussing these things. Well, let's go to the nitty gritties. We've got the E-mini two-minute chart. Made a peak F, top of the Chapman wave. Pulls back, making a cup formation. Should try to retest uh, the high of uh, 20. 24.45.75, trading at 2445 right now, 1250. I'm going to discuss the market in a minute, but just let me go to the 10 minute chart. Had a couple of questions. Got a leg C, and there's a good chance we're going to go to a leg D above 2445.75. And then I think we'll, we'll have a bit of a rest into the lunch hour. What do I mean by a bit of a rest? <clears throat> Look at the look at the daily chart in the Chapman wave method. Oh, I wonder if I've got that up. No, I don't. In the Chapman wave methodology, one of the aspects that has been prime from the very beginning when I, I discovered this, when I used to hand notate the chart and I was using closing price chart. So if you go to a, if you go to a fund. A daily chart, most of the time, you'll just get one price point. It doesn't give you a high or a low because it's only one, one price point per day. And that's like a, a closing price chart. And then I would join with a pencil and a ruler. I'd join all these little dots together. So what's really important about my work, oops, let me just get rid of that. Overlapping, I'll go through all the numbers in a minute. But I wanted to show you something here. For those of you who are new to my work, I need to stretch over. Here we go. Click. Second click should be, oops, right. Hope this is it. Oh, I'm almost about to have to redo this chart. Okay. Chapman wave objective from the lowest, most obvious low bar, merely count each successively higher peak. When you get to the fourth highest peak, alphabetized, uppercase on the upside, lowercase on the downside, fourth peak is D. At D, other things can happen. Doesn't mean to say that you need to sell it down. Does mean that you could take some profits there and put a tighter stop in. There are a whole bunch of things that you can do. Why? Because that's where the deepest and longest correction could occur. But it's also where you could recycle to the upside and have a brand new buy mode. Go to yet another four peaks. What a what an incredible indicator when it's used correctly. Or, Number one. Number two is the, the indicator sometimes is fantastic, but human nature is human nature. Sometimes we just don't believe what we see. And in this particular instance, I do want to believe that this is a leg C and that sometime next week, the early part of maybe by Tuesday or Wednesday, we will get that leg D to the upside. What's really important, you've got the leg D in the 120-minute chart. I'm calling this for now still a leg E in the weekly chart. So... What's the big deal? The big deal, now we can go through the numbers. The Dow. This is Technical Friday, so it would be a little bit more technical. This is a leg E in the daily. This is a leg E slash B in the weekly, but it's a leg E in the monthly. Why do I make a big deal about that? Because D and E, especially when you get a very quick D to an E or a C to a D in the monthly charts, it's a hint to say, be careful, because unless that leg spirals much higher than the previous peak high, you could have the situation where you're looking at some kind of a top forming. All right, and if it's a monthly top, that could be quite serious. Okay, let's go on. We're going to go to the S&P. So the parameters to watch for in the Dow, trading at 21,297, up 115. And you know, I, I always, for 30-something more years, I've followed the Dow on a daily basis, made a call on the Dow. Um, but in this particular instance, for subscribers to my opening call, because the NASDAQ went to all-time highs, the S&P then went to a new all-time high, even though it had a 13-week consolidation. It seemed to me that there was a good chance that the Dow 
either is going to drag the QQQ series lower or the Qs would drag the Dow to a higher high. Well, when the Dow went to a higher high, Still a 13-week, it's actually a 14-week consolidation because it's only just barely broken out from the 21,196 level. Uh, right now, it's 100 points higher. Um, it's, it seemed to me that the NASDAQ was saying, NASDAQ first with the semiconductor index with the S XLK, that's the um, S&P tech ETF. But then we've got... The Dow and the New York Stock Exchange made new all-time highs in the same day. And it said to me, you know what? We're going to be following up on something like the um, mid-caps and then the IWM, which is the Russell 2000. So we went whole hog long, 300% long a few days ago on the TNA, which is 300, three times long the IWM. Why? Because I felt very strong that the pattern I was looking at would allow the market to, to drag and then maybe even uh, lead through the small caps. It very often happens that the small caps are the last to move and then they move very quickly. So that's kind of what we're looking at. So what we did is put half of that position of the 300% long, we just took off when I, I said, if it gets to 57.63, we're in at 50, in the 51s, said if it gets in, if it touches TNA. Uh, half has a race stop okay. um, yeah, at 57.61 exit this half that's a half so we're out for about a 10 maybe 11 percent gain um, and we're holding the rest and now the rest has gone even higher to 57.95 and, and I'm this is probably the last couple of days this could be it I don't know all I'm saying is that now what we've got is let's go through this S&P Monthly, leg D. Weekly, I'm calling it leg E. It could be a recycle. It could be an E slash B. I'm calling it an E for now. But it's a leg C in the week, in the daily. And the daily suggests it should still go to a D. So if there's a new high on Monday, it's still a D. If there's no new high, it becomes a peak C, and we're waiting for leg D. And then I've got to be careful. But this, one of the reasons why I liked all the patterns is that the stochastic and MACD have been confirming the rallies. That's really important. Hey, how about the QQQ? Doesn't let up. Even today, it went to leg C, a squeak high. It went to 143.90, 143, I think, 73, or what was it yesterday? 143.80 was the high yesterday. 10 cents higher so far today. I think it's getting kind of toppy. Um, or two indicators within this whole framework here are suggesting we've got to be start being very careful. My thinking is that the QQQ is telling us that there's a chance that money will start to flow out of the of these really massive moves in the, in the very big caps, high techs, um, the uh, the semiconductors, etc., and flow into the possibly flow into the financials, and maybe we're going to have to hold this IWM because it's the small caps. Sometimes, sometimes they lead. We don't know. So QQQ parameters: uh, the support is at 142.60 to 141.70, uh, uh, but it's still leg C and it can go higher. I will talk about gold. I'll talk about silver. I'll talk about the dollar, and I'll talk about inflection points coming up this week. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician Tower. I'll be right back. Dow's up 110. S&P's up 11 and a half. Be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Yeah. So I've got a couple of questions which I've just dealt with during the break. Um, so we're looking at uh, the question was uh, New York Community Bank Call trading at 13.58, up 32 cents. Is this a better buy than Bank of America? Just purely on the chart formation, I would have to say that uh, the percentage gain on NY, uh, New, York, New York Community Bank, CB, uh, seems to me like it could be a bigger gain in the end. I like it better. I would put one, two thirds in there, and one third in Bank of America out of any position that you would have. I, I think so. Um, then I, there was a question about the patterns and the XLF. What was that question? I'll do it right now since today is Technical Friday. Uh, Technical Friday, big. Okay, code in the den says big pop over the arches in the XLF. Uh, Professor, can you discuss that as well? Thank you. Yes. So um, the XLF, we actually went along this morning and the XLF, um, it's at 24.25 and uh, it's in leg C. This channel that we're looking at here is they're, they're what I call fighting patterns. One is the arch, one is the cup, but this in fact has third one and that is a channel, a, a slightly rising channel. And when it breaks, it has to break quite decisively. It has to go um, on the left side. You have to find something on the left side that is was an important moment. And this is an important moment on the 21st of March. The XLF, the S&P Financial Select uh, ETF, was opened at 24.36, had a high of 24.38, two cents higher, and then closed down. At 2350, went to 2351, closes pennies above that. That's the candle. So this high of 23, nope, it's 2438. Um, I would like to see that take taken out on a closing basis, but really, it's this candle right here, the candle of the 16th of March, with a high of 2497. That has to be the target because if it's able to get even close. Then the left side high of the 2nd of March at 23.30 in peak E, I would say that that would be a target and be like a cup formation after the arch has been successful in the weekly chart. Monthly chart says, hey, things are improving, but the stochastic at 81% needs to cross back positive. It's, it's good at 81%, but the slow-moving average 
is still above the faster moving average. I want to see that change. I want to see it get to about the 83.50 level by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. Um, in, in, it'll be intra month, but I'd like to still see that. Okay. Um, so let's go back to our story. So we're looking at the, uh, what did I say we were looking at? Yes. So we're looking at the IWM. IWM is broken out. Now look at this. We've got the peak C that was reactivated from 141.82 on the 26th of April. Now you've got D. So daily is in a D. Weekly is in an E. And it's just bumping into the Chapman Wave inside track resistance zone. So there's going to be very interesting. But we finally got our D. We Now all the indices are in at least a D. And that says two things. On a short-term basis, and this is what I wanted to talk about this coming week, so let's just, uh, let's just do everything step by step. If I go to the MDY, that was the missing link as well. There it is, leg D. Leg D in the daily in the left side, right side price time match. Very nice. Oh, it did an even quicker time. Whoa, way quicker time. Very good. So that's a D. The technicals are improving. Not great, but they're improving. The weekly technicals are also improving, not great, but they're improving. And I'm going to see whether or not over the period of the next three sessions, not including today, I'm talking about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whether we are looking at a recycle in the weekly charts of many of these that it isn't E, it's actually an E slash B or something like that, so that it means that the low that was made will not be taken out. And the low in this case of March in the mid-cap the S&P mid-cap deposit receipts, MDY, trading at 321.51, up 2.62. The low of the week of 31, uh, 31st of March at 303.85, that will not be taken out if, in fact, this is a new uh, buy mode. So I don't want to say it will be. I'm just saying that's, that's what I'll be studying over the weekend. A lot of charts coming out for my subscribers. Um, yeah. So now let's go on because we want to look at gold. So here's the problem. Gold in the in the daily continuous contract went to a peak C in gold in the GLD, the S&P Spider ETF, went to a peak E. And that peak E was just, I didn't type it and I'll do that now. The high that was made on the 17th of April, 123.07, there we go. 123.07 on 417, I think it was 17. Um, that was fractionally surpassed in leg E with a doji high, gap up to a leg E, never a good sign, at 123.31. Oh, just squeaks above it. 123.31, what day was that? It was one two three four days ago so it was let's call it the fifth i'll come back and check it i'm calling it the fifth for now okay and what's really important about this is that the magd did not go as high as it was before on april the 17th the stochastic was already fading and now the stochastic is once again fading under 80 percent not the magd yet so I'm watching this real closely, and my suspicion is, let me just quickly do silver. I'll show you it's pretty much the same thing. Silver made a peak D four days ago, um, and it was way lower than before, and that makes me real nervous. So now what I'm looking at is I think, and I said this yesterday, last two days, I think that the dollar is forming a, a some kind of a base, a low. Look, the dollar's up. 90, at 97.38, up 41 cents. Not a big deal, but look at the way the technicals have turned up. Look at the way the MACD is turning up. Look at the way the uh, weekly chart um, is flattening out and the stochastic is 7.61. Not great, but it does say this is the opportunity for gold to at least have a decent bounce. And I think that's what's happening today. Um, so what we're looking at is at 97.38, the dollar doesn't really give us any sign of real strength until it closes decisively above the 30th of May, the high of 97.78. I'm going to actually say 98.35, 98 in the mid-98s. I want to see that in the dollar by Wednesday or Thursday of next week. Now, in my work, there are a bunch of things that are going on. 
So we've done the dollar, we've done the um, gold, we did silver. I'm looking at the EUR, USD, and I've got the British pound got clonked on the head yesterday. But I think that the euro dollar is making a possible peak F Yeah, I, I did this oval pattern because I said this is sometimes where the arch forms unless it breaks decisively above and then it's Japan wave stalled inflammation. But my thinking was that with the failing MACD and failing stochastic, that there's a good chance we're making some kind of a top. But it's only leg C. It's actually a peak C if there's no new high today in the weekly chart. And that pattern that we were looking at in the euro dollar, the lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m, look at this, lowercase h, lowercase m, breaks below it, holds above that left side uh, low that was, what, February, uh, March of 2015. So that says there's still some inner strength in the euro-dollar currency pair, um, but it is, this bounce might be, might have run its course. USD, JPY, as we go. Oh, I didn't even show the 10-minute the chart. Yes, I did. No, okay. So the euro-dollar currency pair trading at 162. We'll talk about that when we get back. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. So the 10-minute E-mini still needs to make that leg D above 2445.75. Will it be able to do it? That's the question. All right. So I had a question here about uh, Sarah wants to know about the uh, text, Terex. Uh, industrial, Caterpillar, XLI, CX, Vail, etc. So Terex, T-E-X is a symbol, is up 2.45 at 37.08. Only happens to be 7% higher. Well, 
That is amazing. And uh, it was just sitting down here, dull as anything at 3440, and then suddenly, bam, some news, and it spikes up. Leg D in the daily, leg D in the weekly, leg E in the monthly. I think it's looking very good. I've got a trend line support. It says right here within the next 50 cents or so, it's going to hit that line. I'm going to make that green. I always do that, make that green. Call it a Chapman Wave inside track repellent uh, resistance zone. There you go. Right there. So how it acts on Monday or Tuesday is going to be very important. If it has big follow through, gets to 38.30, that's a breakout. If it suddenly stalls, makes a doji candle, and then starts to pull back, you got to be careful. The weekly chart says, no, this, this, this is very strong. So the answer is, if you're long, stay long. Answer is, you're just asking as a general question, yep, leg D, big spiral. Every time it's done a big spike like this, it's had a bit of a consolidation afterwards. That makes the uh, 38s really important. It's a 37.06 right now. And the 36 support, very important next week. Okay, next question was, uh, MS, which is uh, Morgan Stanley, up today. It's in leg D. It's a little bit more mature in its up move. Uh, B minus over there, B minus. Then it restarts, A, B, C. There's a leg D. So, yeah, let me go to my thinking here. I'm going to go back. So, yeah, Morgan Stanley acting very well. This is a good, good breakout to the upside, but it needs to hold at 44.97 up 88 cents. It must hold the 43.50 to 42.90 area next week under any condition. Okay, now we're going to do this. That's very important. Back to the USD JPY. I didn't finish that. That's the euro dollar, uh, the dollar Japanese yen currency pair. Nice pop up today. There was that left side, right side price time, time match we were looking at. It kind of held that support in the gap. This is going to be very important. I still think 108.50s is going to be the target on the downside. I don't know when, because it says by a week's time, Thursday to Tuesday of next week. Thursday of next week to Tuesday of the following week, it should be retesting the low of the 108 area. There's a good balance. How does it how does it deal with the balance? I, I just can't say right now other than to think that the 110 90 to 111 15 area should be strong resistance. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. Now we can go to um, uh, Goldman Sachs. I mentioned that in my uh, newsletter this morning. <clears throat> it's up four at 222.90, but it's still running into the strong resistance. I happen to think Goldman Sachs has to wait a while. And then I think it becomes a leader. But for now, it's really a follower. That's really interesting. So Goldman Sachs is not nearly as strong as Morgan Stanley was. And Bank of America had a really nice breakout. So uh, <clears throat> I covered those. There's one more question. Um, that's right. So looking at now I can look at the TNX. See, the TNX is pulling back. And as it's pulling back, let me just first do the TLT because most people look at the TLT. Made a peak E and now it's pulled back for four sessions, three sessions. The MACD is turning down. It's not nearly as strong as it was when it went to the 124.98 high of the 18th. So the high of, if that's the 5th or 6th, let me just double check what that is. That is the 6th of June, <clears throat> 125.87. Stochastic's now pulling back. That might be it. And now we can look at my yields. And the yields are saying, <clears throat> now we could have a little bit of a rally. Uh, I wouldn't say a little bit. I don't know how much of a rally. But the rally at, at 2.87 for the 30-year T, T bond yield could go to this trend line right here, 30.50s. Uh, the 10-year T note yield at 22.20 could test the 23.60 level. And the five-year at 17.83. If there is a rally next week, which will help um, the financials. And I think it might hurt the market itself. I think the market's going to say, you know what? We're not ready for this. We're, not, we're in a, bit, a little bit of a recession in some of the areas. That's what I'm thinking. So, and I'll show you why I'm, why I'm thinking that. <clears throat> Would II shares, the I shares of the global timber and forestry ETF, could very well be making a peak effort. It could have recycled. And we'll only know next week. But if it doesn't go above 61.65, let me double check. 61.65, the high of last week, all of next week, 
then I think this is an effort we're going to be pulling back. And the same thing with the um, housing sector, the Philadelphia housing sector. If it doesn't go above 278.79, so far it's at 277.49, so it has a, a point to go, then this could be a peak E. I'm going to be watching. Next week could very well be turnaround week. Let me, let me show you why. The SMHs, I believe, are so close to a reversal. This is a leg F. I'm calling it an F for now. I don't really want to uh, deal with it as a recycle for, for a couple of reasons. It could go to a G, but I don't think it's going to be a brand new start to go to a D. So this is my thinking. Semiconductors are almost at a, a top of some significance on the short to maybe even intermediate term. This is my thinking. It doesn't have to work out, but that's what I'm thinking. The QQQ will be influenced. But it does have some financials, but I think it's going to be influenced. And it should have a little squeak to a D. It doesn't have to, but I think it will get to a D next week, right? And the XLK, which is the S&P um, tech sector, is in D. And I think it's getting really close to some kind of a pullback. We'll see what kind of candle we get in the weekly chart. But the monthly is still in leg C, so looking out longer term, it's still fantastic. Now. Why do I say that I think we could get a turn? Look at the dollar. This dollar is just indicating, based on the technicals, that it wants to have a pretty decent bounce. I'm still calling it a bounce. I can't call it anything else because the weekly chart is still very negative. But it could go from the low that was made just three days ago, three, four days ago in the 9651 area. It could have a rally to the 98 or even the 99s. Hey, that's 5%. That's a, that's a good percentage rally. So I don't know yet if that's really what's going to happen. But my thinking is that next week we could start to see money come out of the big, the heavy-duty flyers to the upside and just start to filter in towards the, the stocks and the areas that have been weak but are now showing some kind of strength. And who knows, maybe the IWM will end up being that area. We'll see. So I just thought I wanted to go through that technical Friday. So there are a couple of things that I said I would talk about in a little bit more detail. I wanted to go to the IYT, which is the the iShares Transportation Average ETF. Suddenly stalled. It was doing very nicely going from the 157s to the 169s, and all of a sudden it's stuck. The weekly chart was making a beautiful cup after the arch, uh, successful arch formation, and now it's stuck. It has not gone to its leg D. But I don't think that I need the IYT to make it D right now. It could take a little bit of time to do that. It could actually take a few weeks before it retests at least the last high of 173.88, and it's at 168.65 right now. I'm just trying to put all the little ducks in order to see whether or not we could get some kind of reversals this coming week. That was a chapter. That was up 97. We'll be right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right, so here we are, and uh, a technical Friday, and we've got a couple of technical questions. The one, a couple of things are going on in the den. We're having a whole big converse here. Uh, P in the den says uh, this could be a false break to the upside in in the um, the financials, and I, I I said I can't disagree, but I wanted to explain what I'm looking at. So that's number one. And number two is I had a, a question about a stock that we had in my uh, uh, my opening call newsletter. It's called uh, Hydrogenics Corporation. Uh, they build, manufacture industrial and commercial hydrogen systems. Um, we had it at $7.43 on the 5th. It had a really nice pop, went to 8.15, held tight the next day. Let me open this up a little bit. And then I, I, I'm still trying to figure out what else. I thought it was an earnings report or something. It had another one of those sudden big red candles to the downside. Took us out for a, a small one, one Point, uh, 1.9 or less than a 2% loss. Um, and then it did exactly what I had planned for the weekly chart, which is the left side, right side price time match, uh, going back first to the 8 to uh, eight, uh, 20 something area, and then possibly to the tens, because that's where it would work, or the 200 period moving average. Well, we're out. And the next day, it spikes up. And what happens today? It's a, it hits $9.60. It fulfills all the requirements. So the question was, <clears throat> am I now waiting? Well, first of all, when, when I, I would not have got back in yesterday on a gap up. I would have said, oh, geez, I don't, I don't know what's going on. So I would have missed the re-entry. I, maybe I made the stop too tight. Sometimes with these small caps, I just want to buy it and hold it. But I really don't want my subscribers holding the 20 or 25 percent loss. We can always make it up over a period of time, 8 percent, 6 percent. We don't even try to have those, just small losses. Um, but this is, I don't know. All I'm saying is it's done what I wanted it to. I'm going to have to just rethink it for quite a while. The monthly is fantastic. I just I, now I don't I don't know I'll have to think think it through. Where do we get back in? My mistake was in saying that the stop was 15 cents lower. I should have said 13 cents lower. Sorry, I should have said let's make the stop on some at that particular area and keep it. Or I should have said you know what? If I like it very much, if it holds a certain level of seven, let's say, um, in that area, let's add a little bit more. But I I did okay. So that's it. So the answer is. I just don't know. It's on my list. I'm just going to have to wait. It, it's had the big move going from the uh, 650s to uh, the nine, 950s. This is amazing. So, uh, yeah, what can I say? Okay. Now, so that was, the one th that was the one thing on Technical Friday. The other one is the banks. So when I look at the KRE, now KRE, of course, this is the regional S&P SPY, the regional bank index. Very nice break to the upside. It's up $1.48 and 5556 the monthly chart did take the weekly chart did take out its left side low last week 
And that was the law of uh, March the 31st, the week of the 31st at 5117. We're just a tad higher, and then this week hasn't even looked back, and it's very strong. I like it. I like it also because I'm calling it really peak B, not an E, but a peak B in the monthly. So this really has a lot of room to go, and that's the same with XLF. Now, what I did say is that if I'm correct in saying that there's a possibility that next week we have inflection points, the dollar goes higher, gold goes a little bit lower, um, um, and go, the dollar essentially leads the other currencies lower as it strengthens, and that the TLT could, in fact, have a bit of a pullback. We've gone to a peak E. Um, it's good that the monthly, the weekly chart went to a new recovery high, but it hasn't fulfilled the requirement of that very big ugly candle from way back in January, was it? Yeah, January the 11th, where it opens at 131.20. It opens at 130.75, hits the 131s, and then plummets down to 121. That's just one of the ugliest candles we've had in bonds. Um, so I, this is what I'm saying, that I think we can have a rotation and slow it down. The question was, so will money flow into where? So the thing is, you saw in the IBB how long it took before fund managers finally relented and said, you know, announced in leg B, actually looking quite good. Um, that's the uh, NASDAQ Biotech. It actually went above the 296, as I said, was going to be a resistance to the 297.92. So... What I had said was that look how long, look at this move in the monthly chart of the IBB. It took fund managers months, almost a year before they finally decided, you know what, maybe this is not the area that's going to work. Because for years it was like every, every day if the market pulled back and the IBB pulled back, you buy it by the end of the day, you're up. You look like a genius. And it didn't work. So I suspect that we're going to be seeing some of the same activity in the SMHs, the semiconductor index. They aren't going to just give up. The money's just not going to all of a sudden, Monday, everybody says, okay, everybody out. No, it doesn't work that way. It's going to take weeks and then months before you finally see it. So um, that's what I wanted to say. Now, let's just go back to the IWM, because this is part of what I want to talk about. The rotation says, and I wasn't sure whether the IBB would be part of the weak rotation next week or the strong rotation. Now my thinking is because of today's action that perhaps there is a leg D to the upside in the monthly chart of the IBB. All the others have done it, except it's not to an all-time high. It's just to a recovery high in the, in the 300s, and that Next week, we start to see these IBB stocks start to act very well. Some of the small caps act very well. And you start to see some of the big caps, like an Amazon, take its summer break before it gets ready and, and geared up for the, uh, for the end of the year. Where Amazon just sells everything it can. Leg G slash C in the monthly. Leg F. In the, I'm calling it F for now in the weekly. I think it might be an F slash B, but I'm calling it an F. And... Peak G, maybe no D, in the uh, daily chart. And what was the what, what are the levels? Have we seen any round numbers? No round numbers. No, it right. doesn't matter. We don't have to see them. But my thinking is that there's a chance that Amazon is going to pull back. There's a chance that Facebook, having made a new all-time high today in leg E, is going to take a little bit of a breather. That's what I'm thinking. That's what we're trying to trade. And we'll see if that works out. Okay? I just want you to cover that to say, to talk about the thinking behind and the reasoning behind the positions. That's all. So, why did I not go, say, three times long, the UDOW? Let's just go to the Dow. Let's go to the Dow for the moment and say, since I'm always following the Dow, because I didn't think, I could be wrong, I just didn't think that this move right here had the same potential power move that the IWM would have. Because if the IWM, if the small, when the small caps kick in, they can actually go a lot longer and a lot higher than you anticipate. And when it happens, it's always just, whoa, look at that. Small caps taking, taking on uh, the upside. Uh, it's just great to see. So th there were two things that I wanted to do. One is I was going to make a decision today that if in the TNA, which is three times long, the IWM, 
and we're in, in at 53.99, trading at 58.25 right now. If it crossed uh, above the high that was made back on the sec 22nd, 26th of uh, April at 57.60, should I just raise the stop or should I get the, get the money out, half the money out right away and say, hey, that's fine because if I put a stop in, then I could be stopped out at a lower price and it doesn't make sense. This way I know exactly where to exit, subscribe, and go right out, and we still have a very nice position in it if it wants to go higher. I'll be back. How's the chapter target initial target? Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Learn how to trade options with swim lessons brought to you by td ameritrade think or swim next on tfnn hi folks we're back just a real quick thing dell delta airlines showing you 5336 and up 52 cents it's an alternate count all i can say 5338 right now it must hold the 51 support <laughs> into early next week but it's looking very good let's go to ben and tallahassee ben how are you good Basil, how are you i'm well thank you Good. So I got a general comment and then a uh, uh, question. So it seems like you way. certainly nailed this whole rotational aspect, um, and it's it's pretty amazing, and it, it, it makes a lot of sense, right? You, they, they run up the um, certain industries and, and groups, whether it's technology or, or you know, uh, mining or whatever it is, and then whatever drops down, they just rotate into that sector. And it's right. like, okay, yeah. you know, at some point, what in the world stops this this uh, never-ending engine? And to me, I guess here's a few questions. One is, um, do you feel computer trading, computer trading in general over the last, you know, whatever, eight years has really helped make this rotational model a lot more efficient? 
that the you know the big firms use it too. Um, it seems like what could really what really stops this and put, puts a ceiling on this rotational aspect you know, outside of you know in your case getting all the index. In. Whoops, uh, Ben, you're sort of cutting out. Um, so let, let me just ask you. So let, let me. Let me do this so that uh, because you're cutting in and out. So I'm going to answer the question just about the S&P. I'm going to guess what the question is. <clears throat> how long can the S&P keep going up and how would we rotate? How would be effective uh, if there's a rotation? What would it do to the S&P? So let me just do that. I'm going to spend a little time over the weekend. Then Monday, I'll give you some kind of a better assessment. Right now, what I'm looking at is that the stochastic at 91% is starting to, de to decline a little bit. It's still very strong. The MAGD is still very good but Bandle? today yes so uh, uh, i get you give me a question real quick so i can get to it yeah i'm sorry i got i got i got taken off here right uh so you didn't hear any of that the last part i i, I heard just little snippets about it and i couldn't get it all so oh, i'm um, sorry i'm sorry okay yeah so so it looks like two things it has, it has the computer industry and computer-based okay, trading I got that, computer, right the, next question the second, next the part yep the, yeah, the second one is, um, you know, in your case, of course, it's the D, E's, and F's that, you know, right. bring your yellow flags up. But, but also, it, it, you think it's got to be very analogous to or very similar to the, the P.E. ratios, right? Ultimately, at some point, okay. these companies so, got to come to a point right. where, yeah. So I don't want to run out of time. We've only got a few seconds. I'm going to deal with this. Uh, first of all, I'm going to deal with it for subscribers over the weekend. But Monday, I'll also talk about it. Two things are going on. I don't think that the the computer trading, that is the number of shares traded, is really an issue at all as far as I'm concerned. What is an issue is that for the last year and a half to two years, more and more of what we would call computerized trading, meaning that people go in to discuss with their financial advisors, and advisors all have these little packages that basically are saying, buy, hold and buy, and we'll try to give you a portfolio matching exactly your fear factor, et cetera. Essentially, everybody is long. That's what we're looking at, or going to go long. I'm going to deal with that on Monday. And at the same time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the FX and the EFX, but I will also talk about these alternate counts. For instance, I'll have to spend time over the weekend. Is the, the MACD crossing positive and the S&P now weekly chart and the MACD still and, and the stochastic at 91 percent. What does that mean? Is this now just a brand new B in the S&P weekly or is it really an E? I think that's kind of what you're referring to. So um, I'm going to try to deal with that on Monday. OK, so folks, we're about to wrap up. Dow's up 101. I'm suspecting next week's going to be a very critical week in my work in terms of how the rotation works, whether there's a sharp and ugly pullback, if the banks will be affected, or whether we just keep rolling over sector to sector as other sectors take up the slack. Look what happened with the IP today. That's what happened. Check out my opening call during the weekend. I think you'll find it very uh, helpful and hopefully beneficial. I'll be back on my... Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TF. N N